Are you, are you ready? We, oh, we gotta unlock. Okay, ready? So, put my password in here. All right, ready? All right. On three? One, two, three. Okay, Wait, nope, oh, that was wrong. Right. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, oh, mine went. That's what did it. Oh. I uh, instinctively hit enter as I went, um, and now I'm just on all the wrong things, so I've really broken this. Uh, there we go, slideshow. No, nobody look at our slides. Everyone in the audience, close your eyes. <laughs> I can see you, and most of you do not have your eyes closed, and that offends me for not listening. I've done nothing to you, but now you get to see me. I really, I'm so sorry, everybody. <laughs> I have really, really done it. Presenter view, because I need notes. I am not going to be able to successfully do this without them. Uh, this is, I'm gonna pretend that we can, I'm pretending this is part of it. Oh. Um, so, so you're good, yeah, yeah. View, so I don't want my toolbar. And now if I go here, click, nope, that was, whoa, good, everybody has their eyes closed, it's fine. And I hit this button. All right, and now, All right. now we don't touch anything. All right. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, that step comes out of nowhere. All right, uh, welcome. Uh, yeah, welcome to our talk. Yeah, it's uh, it's, uh, it's titled, it's titled uh, uh, oh, oh, uh, uh, equal real tart. Nailed it. All right, yeah, Good. yeah perfect. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, my name is Jessica Janik. I'm a senior software engineer on the Angular Framework team. Uh, my name is Joey Parrott. I am uh, in charge of Angular's developer infrastructure and operations like, for our own our own team. We're here to talk about security-related things today. Um, security is a huge topic of conversation, um, and it's a big challenge. Security is uh, naturally a defensive thing. You don't know what kind of attacks will come from, where, where they'll come from, what kind of attacks will happen. So. Um, you can't, you can't really predict it. And it's not really as easy as just what I'd like to be. Don't do bad things. That should be security. I mean, that's real simple, right? Yeah. It is, yeah. People, people usually listen when you say just keep out. Yeah, so every it's, time. Yeah, that's it's how fine. it works. It's fine, it's easy. We've all been on the internet. Yeah, let's, we're gonna talk about a few things, though. Yeah, so we're gonna talk about several things today. We're gonna talk about the supply chain. We're gonna talk about how that supply chain uh, affects your security and the Angular organization. We're gonna talk about how our operations have changed and how those operations are helping the Angular organization improve and be in more secure ways. We're also gonna talk about the framework itself and how we're helping applications to be more secure by default and how that affects all of you. Yeah. So, supply chain, our first topic. Most people don't know much about the supply chain, so I'm gonna be honest with you, 99% of our talk is about the supply chain right now. Just finding it seems to be the biggest challenge for people. But Indeed. we need to answer a number of questions in our talk. So we're gonna answer questions like what is the supply chain? Who is the supply chain? When is the supply chain? Where is the supply chain? And we searched high and low, and I'm excited to announce in front of all of you, we did it. Here it is. There's the supply chain. We, we found, found it. it. Thank you, everybody. Yep. It's been great. You guys have been a great audience. All right. Just grab. Oh. 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 Wait, Wait, nope, there's no. more. There's, <laughs> we forgot, we signed up, we didn't sign up for a lightning talk? We, yeah, they're giving us a right, whole 20 minutes. Right. Yeah, uh, we've got okay. a lot more to talk yeah. about. Okay. Yep, okay, we'll continue. So when we say the supply chain, what we're really talking about is how you securely develop software. And since we all rely on others, securely developing software relies on the whole supply chain of how you, how you get there. And if I, if I recall, Jessica, there was recently a pretty big proclamation in this area? Yeah, I believe it was, Execute order 1402. Wait, no, I no. think it was exec executive order 1408. Exactly. Yeah. Th yeah, this is the one where the the Git clones turn on the Jedi, right? Not exactly. <laughs> Not exactly. <laughs> okay. So it's actually about establishing where software where is really coming from. It's bill of materials. Uh, who's Bill? Oh, he's just some English knight, though. I think he prefers William. Ah, yes. Sir William. Sir okay. William. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. So, you may be asking yourself, like, does Angular have a software bill of materials? In fact, what are its material components? 
In fact, is there a development kit for those material components? Is there some sort of material design involved? Hmm. Well, Angular doesn't directly provide a bill of materials, but we can talk about what it is, and it's really just a way for people to know what is in their software. So SBOM can be thought of as being made of a set of ingredients that producers make available for consumers of their software. Wow, that's a lot, Joey. Is there an easier way to explain this? Absolutely. One time, I had a friend, and they were a teacher, and they said analogies are helpful. So let's think of how a restaurant works. You know, something that all of us could run and understand perfectly, a restaurant. So a restaurant gets ingredients from their vendors, right? And they, are, they have to ensure the ingredients don't get contaminated and aren't bad. But, but that doesn't change. that They still bear the responsibility to the customers whenever problems arise. Does uh, that make sense? Yeah, I think I get it now, Joey. Mm -hmm. My application has all the dependencies from the interwebs. Yep. And then Sir William, mm -hmm. he helps me know that my dependencies are safe and not vulnerable. Yep. Right? Yep. Okay. You're getting it. And then my application is still responsible for its users when vulnerabilities are found. You got it. <sighs> awesome. You did it. Yes. So I get what SBOM is providing me, but how did Sir William O Materials even materialize? And, uh, Fourth wall, this is my materialization joke. <laughs> this should energize everyone. I know I'm beaming. <laughs> All jokes aside, um, a bill of materials is only really as good as how the materials are created. So we want to talk a little bit about the efforts the Angular team is currently going through to improve our own operational security. So a wise man once said, the only secure system has no users. However, it's really hard to use a system with no users. So what we really need to do is instead of having no users, we want to make sure that people can't just go do whatever they want. We need to make sure that everything is validated by multiple people. So we are, we're really just trying to make sure we don't have any rogue actors. And that means that Anna Paquin can't access any of the systems. That is not exactly what I mean, but yes, no rogue actors. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. So uh, one of the, the way that we are currently going about trying to eliminate the ability for people to, to have rogue access is within our own operations, we actually are going to be moving into a setup which we have no one with right access to our repositories. Instead, we are going to have a, uh, a separate authentication system which can provide authentication for when an action needs to happen. And this works because we use a fork and pull model. All of the development of Angular occurs in forks, and then PRs are created to actually make the changes. So because of that, we don't actually need anybody to push directly to our repository. So our system actually is going, it actually provides temporary access that is only good for the life of that action. So now if any of you steal my personal access token, which I know you're all trying, haven't gotten it yet, you can't do anything to the Angular repositories because I don't actually have any right access anymore. And users still need to get things done. We have to find a balance for all of the security measures we're, we're taking. This right here is a very real world example of what we experience every and, single time. Every day, yeah. every PR we put up, one I've little net, otherwise LG, LGTM approved. And uh, ideally, you would just never merge code that hasn't been unreviewed, but this, since this happens all of the time, it's just it, it's something we have to deal with. So going forward, um, we are now going to re uh, require approval on the latest commit for any pull request. So if you are putting out a, a contributor pull request and you, uh, you, in your PR you get that sign off, someone approves on it, gives you that one little nit, and then you push that additional commit to fix the one little nit, there's gonna be additional reviews required at that point. We do allow some trusted users, like folks of us who are on the Angular team, to perform changes after that approval occurs, and then we will actually be levering, uh, leveraging GitHub actions to actually request, request those reviews again in the case that they're necessary. Okay, so this is the part where I'm supposed to do a really good transition to this topic, but I didn't really forget it. We can fix that in post, right? 
<laughs> yeah, it'll just get back. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, go ahead. So uh, Angular actually is also helping you by relying on minimal dependencies, and that keeps the potential for vulnerabilities pretty limited and nice and lean. You know, like a good MLT. A joke I fully understand. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, try as we might, vulnerabilities can still happen and can still be found. And as Minko talked about earlier, we're excited to announce that uh, we are one of Google's flagship OSS uh, projects that are included in the shortened version of what he read, which is just Google OSS VRP. Verp. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So uh, I just kind of wanted to cover a bit more. He talked about what you can get uh, for for uh, bringing vulnerabilities to us, but um, just to kind of talk about specifically what type of vulnerabilities we look for. Um, it's things like ways that our supply chain can be compromised, uh, vulnerabilities that are born out of design choices, as well as credentials that are leaked, uh, whether that is on GitHub or one of the other uh, platforms that we rely on. Um, and also, while I failed to put it on the slide, uh, we actually have recently updated our security, doc our security documentation on GitHub, as well as the Angular IO site, to inform people that uh, we actually no longer ask people to email us at security, uh, security at Angular IO, but instead they can go to bughunters.com, which is Google's VRP, to actually go through there uh, and have all of the security engineers of Google be able to help uh, validate things as well. So thank you all so much. For real this time. For real. For real. You've been a great audience. We've been better speakers. Thank you. Live long and prosper, everyone. Thank you so much. That was amazing.